Hi, and welcome to Time Equation, YouTube channel of a watch collecting aficionado. On it, I talk about watches and showcase my personal collection. Watch collecting is a journey, and every piece you add to a collection leaves a mark. Every new piece teaches you something about watches, and each piece helps to refine your watch collecting taste. In this watch collecting journey, we're following my personal growth as a watch collector, and so far, I've shared the first three stops in that journey. All Breitlings and all chronographs, the Navitimer, Super Ocean Heritage, and the Premier. Each of them a fantastic watch that can hold its own. But a watch collector is always looking for that next piece. And for me, the hunt for the next one started even before Premier was added to the collection. As I mentioned in the video that showcased the Premier, the day I got it, I went in to purchase another watch. And I had a really special Rolex in mind. Rolex Skydweller in steel with a blue dial. What I didn't know at the time was just how crazy Rolex steel sports watch market is. I naively thought that I could just waltz into an AD, try on one, and purchase it on the spot. Luckily for me, my AD didn't laugh me out of the room for simply asking that. They've explained how rare these things actually are, and that in their case, they haven't really gotten one since its debut in 2017. So me, like many others, decided to go with what's actually available. And at the time, Breitling Premier Panda Dial just launched. I liked everything about that watch as well, so I decided to purchase it instead. However, unlike many others, I didn't put myself on a waiting list for the Skydweller. It just seemed impossible to get one where I live. So I decided to let that dream go. If they didn't get one since its launch, what were the odds of me being the first one in line to get one anyway? But Fate is a funny thing though. We, watch collectors, like to talk about the history behind the watches we have. Some are bought as presents, some are commemorating an occasion, and some are inherited from our ancestors. And some create a history of their own, starting from the first moment you see them. I, as all of those bitten by the watch bug, can't simply walk past the store window. If that store window displays watches, that is you're really going to find me glued to it, at least until I had the chance to look at every single one of those pieces. Worse yet, when you like watches, you would start to seek them out, and sometimes a leisurely stroll around the town involves a fair bit of watch browsing. It was just that type of a day when I picked up my dream watch. Standing in front of a store window of my AD, looking at all the Breitling pieces they had in their display, not really planning on going inside to try any, just admiring the solid gold Mavit timer that had, pondering how well it would look on my wrist, and thinking if a solid yellow gold watch is something I even want for myself. Then something happened. I heard a knock from the other side of the glass. They waved at me as well. At that point, I've been in their store quite a few times, so they do know me and they do know that I really like watches. I was even wearing the Navitime they sold me a few months back. So they step outside, they tell me they have something really special to show me. A watch just came in, and it's not even registered in their sales system yet, but they do think that I should take a look at it. So they sit me down and they bring out the box, and without even telling me what's inside the box. A bit of a surprise, but a welcome one, because inside the box was the watch I asked them about just a few months ago. A blue dial Rolex Skydweller. And that's not an opportunity you want to turn down, as it is unlikely that such a good fortune could repeat. So I got one, right then and there, my dream watch. There's a lot of reasons why this particular Rolex model stands out in the crowd. Even though, to some, it might seem like a larger date just at the first glance. Skydweller is deceptively simple. It incorporates an impressive number of complications that are brilliantly laid out on the dial, which, even though this watch is only 42 millimeters in diameter, has found the room to show the time, the date, the month, and even a second time zone. These complications make the Skydweller the most unique Rolex in the catalog, which describes it as a perfect traveling companion, something I found to be true myself. As this is my watch of choice, for any trip that involves a time zone change. But let us step back and admire the case for just a second. Its 42 millimeters stainless steel case is gently curved on its sides and the lugs. 
executed in high polish, it captures, bends, and plays with the light with a dash of elegance. The case itself is symmetrical, as the 9 and 3 o'clock sides look identical, aside from the side crown that sits in the middle, which is a twin lock screw down crown, helping the watch achieve its 100 meter water resistance. Height of the case, 14 millimeters, makes Skydweller a strong presence on the wrist. That height makes it taller than the date chest, a comparison to which simply must be done, based on just how similar these two cases are to each other. But the height difference here is justifiable, given the number of complications that are packed within such a small space. Regardless of its height, the watch slides under the shirt sleeves and cuffs with ease. On the top, Skydweller's theme of playing with the light continues with the fluted bezel. It captures the light and makes the watch glimmer across the room. Skydweller draws attention to itself with pure geometry alone. Spectacular case execution and a sign of true watch making mastery. Unlike the case, the bezel is made out of 18 karat white gold. Forged in the Rolex owned factory foundries, this white gold is solid, with the same color throughout. And while it would be a shame to have it scratched, you can still have a peace of mind that even if you do, it will still look good. Out of all dial options, the sunburst metallic blue is the most sought after. There's something about the blue fairy's stainless steel sports watches that makes them irresistible to watch collectors. I suspect that Rolex is in on our little secret as well, as this particular model is the most scarce one. Almost impossible to get at retail prices and therefore sold with a high profit margin on websites like Chrono24. Easily the best looking one when compared to the black and white alternatives. That made it my favorite. The rest of the dial is laid out brilliantly. White gold indices for every hour except those at the 3 and the 12 o'clock positions. The top is marked with a solid white gold Rolex 5 pointed crown logo. And at the 3 o'clock there's the first noticeable complication, the date which is magnified with a cyclops lens. And even though some people might hate that look, the cyclops is found on most Rolex models. Aside from the function it provides, it is one of the features that makes Rolexes recognizable from a distance. Cyclops works really well on this particular model, given its larger dimension. The second complication which one might spot right away is the second time zone. Yes, this watch is a GMT, as it can simultaneously track times in two different time zones. Referred to as local and the home time, the hour hand and the GMT chapter ring work together to make time zone jumping easy. This GMT implementation is quite unique, and in my opinion it works best as it keeps the dial clean. It eliminates the need for an additional hand to be driven from the center, in addition to hours, minutes and seconds. The 24 hour chapter ring displays the home time, which is read just below the red triangle. Between Skydweller and the GMT Master 2, this is my pick for a perfect travel watch. And consequently, this is my favorite GMT implementation. But the dial isn't done giving you useful information just yet. Skydweller is an annual calendar as well. So, in addition to the day of the month, it can also display the month as well. And this is where the watch struck me as brilliant. The way it displays the month is perfectly integrated into the dial. There are 12 months in a year, and there are 12 hour indicators on the dial. About each of those, there's a small aperture, which, when filled in red, indicates the month of the year. Given we're now in July, the aperture above seven o'clock is red. That way, the watch tells you that today is July the 11th. This, mind-blowing discovery made me fall in love with the watch and all its complications. But it doesn't stop there. Annual calendar means that the watch knows just how many days there are in a month. So if you keep it running, it will automatically skip from the 30th in the month to the 1st, for all the months of the year that have 30 days. The only time you need to adjust the annual calendar is in February. Depending on if it's a leap year or not, you would need to advance the calendar by either 3 or 4 days, and you set it to March 1st. It's not a lot to ask that the watch is manually adjusted once a year, I think. Setting the watch is an experience by itself, and that is where Rolex's brilliance shows once again. You see, 
The bezel is not just a decorative piece. It has a function. It is a part of the movement. Called a command ring, it allows setting the watch's functions. Without the need to have any hidden pushes anywhere on the case, you can set the day, the month, and the time in both time zones, just by selecting the configuration with the command ring, and by turning the crown. All these things together make SkyDweller the most complicated Rolex watch to date. Powered by the Caliber 9001, the movement sits on top of 40 joules. It operates at 4 Hz, ticking 28,800 times an hour, with a solid 72 hours of internal power reserve. You can take it off during the weekend and still find it ticking on Mondays. Like all Rolex watches, SkyDweller is a superlative chronometer, meaning that its accuracy is between minus 2 seconds and plus 2 seconds a day, which is not only stricter than COSC, it is also measured on a fully cased up watch, as opposed to COSC, that is a certification for the movement alone. My Rolex SkyDweller operates at a steady plus 1 seconds a day. It is fantastically accurate that for a time it served as a reference time to setting all my other watches. To keep that accuracy throughout the day, regardless of your activity, Rolex equips this watch with a high-performance shock absorbers. Additionally, the handmade Breguet overcoil hairspring is paramagnetic. Blue parachrome hairspring is made out of alloy combination of niobium zirconium that improves the hairspring resistance to shock, magnetic forces, oxidation, and temperature variations. That's how much material science is necessary to keep the Rolex promise of the superlative chronometer accuracy. When you buy this piece, you buy the brand and the engineering excellence behind it. The bracelet is comfortable oyster steel bracelet. Made out of three links, it features the satin finishes on the sides and high polished center links. The links are held together by screws. That makes the size adjustments easy. The clasp is solid, milled out, stamped with the Rolex logo. The clasp latches shut, securely so, with a brick and a hook system. You can't accidentally open it. It has to be opened by lifting the beak. More size adjustments are available with the clasp. There's an easy link system on the other side. Opening that extends the bracelet by 5 mm, equivalent of adding or removing a link. Inside the clasp, there's also a set of divots to additionally adjust the size. This is a very comfortable bracelet that lets the skin breathe as you wear the watch during the summer. Rolex SkyDweller is the ultimate travel companion. Hefty presence on the wrist and a blend of perfect sports elegance. Out of all the watches in my collection, the SkyDweller is the go-to choice. And funny enough, a typical watch of choice for when I'm out to acquire another piece. There's just something about this watch which makes me compare it to every other one, before making the decision to expand the collection. If I was ever forced to keep just one watch from my current collection, Rolex SkyDweller would be the one to keep. That's how good of a watch this is. My watch collecting journey continues. While this is the first Rolex I bought for myself, it wasn't the last. The next time I'll be showing another watch from my collection that has an interesting backstory. The next time we'll be looking at my first Omega. The fifth watch I bought for myself. Following this Rolex, my collection grew rather quickly. Every few months I'd buy a new watch that was different from the last. Today, my collection stands at a dozen pieces, each with its own story and a set of quirks. I invite you to follow my watch collecting journey by subscribing to my channel. That will get notified and discover the watch I've chosen next. Until then.